and you're only 100 or so miles, 120 miles away from that path of totality. So even though you're going to get 96%, it doesn't matter. The 98% doesn't matter. 100% is what counts, and that's only in the path of totality. Now, I'll, I just want to point out some resources for finding out more about the eclipse after the talk, so you can start planning and getting ready for that big day next summer. Um, Jay Anderson, who I've mentioned before, the, my meteorologist friend, he has a website called Eclipsophile. And you can either Google Eclipsophile or Google Jay Anderson Eclipse Weather, and you'll find his website. And he's going to be posting weather updates, especially in the week before the eclipse, with links to various weather sources. So that's a good place to keep tabs of the weather. In addition to the standard places like the National Weather Service or AccuWeather or whatever else. Jay's, Jay is going to be posting a lot of stuff, but with an eye on the eclipses. It's the eclipse itself. Another good location is uh, Michael Zeiler's Great American Eclipse.com. He's, he's the fellow that made those graphics that showed the, dis the population distance from the eclipse path. He's a professional cartographer, so he has wonderful maps of the eclipse. He's got maps of, of the eclipse path through every state in the country, so if you want a nice poster of the eclipse through your state, uh, you can get that from him. And he's got eclipse glasses and all kinds of eclipse uh, uh, memorabilia to uh, prepare you for the eclipse. Um, I've got an eclipse uh, uh, website called eclipsewise.com, and I've got predictions on there for 5,000 years of solar eclipses and 5,000 years of lunar eclipses a map for every single one during that 5,000 years. So that's, that's a good resource. And of course, I've got a special page just for 2017. And I'm not going to give you a big, long URL to remember to find this. All you have to remember is EclipseWise 2017 Total Solar Eclipse. And if you Google that, you will find a link to, to this page. And there are some, some good features on this page I want to call your attention to. And one of them is a link to a Google map um, that has the eclipse path plotted on it. And if you take your mouse and click on the map any place, um, it will tell you the, the times when the eclipse begins and ends in the duration of totality, or the amount of partial eclipse from any location on the map. And of course, just like any Google map, you can zo zoom into it and see the highways, see which way they're running, plan some strategy before you jump, get out on the road, or even check it with a cell phone if you've got reception. Uh, and again, um, just Google EclipseWise 2017 Total Solar Eclipse to find this map. Um, I'm on Facebook. I welcome you to friend me on Facebook. I frequently publish things and links to the eclipse on Facebook. When I was still at Goddard, um, I published a series of eclipse bulletins with Jay Anderson, the meteorologist, on upcoming eclipses. Each one was focused on a different eclipse. And since we've retired, we figured out a new way to do this without government funding. Um, we're doing books on demand now, so we publish them ourselves. And we've got a book on the 2017 eclipse. Um, for most people, this is more information than you ever want to know about this. <laughs> but we've also got, uh, I've also got another book that's just a book of maps, uh, road atlas for the eclipse, that if you're going to jump in the car and chase the, the, the you need to know exactly where to go. This has the maps, and it even has these, these lines that show you the duration, depending on how deep you go into the eclipse path, how long it's going to be at various towns. My wife has written a children's book. None of that book. The eclipse is featuring our granddaughters. They've been indoctrinated into the eclipse, and they're all set to see their first total eclipse uh, next summer. And we've got another booklet with eclipse glasses. And we're out stirring everybody up, getting people excited about it. One thing I want to mention is if, if you live, if you have, if you go to university or if you have a family and, 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 and your children are going to a school where they're starting school or they're starting classes on Eclipse Day, contact somebody now and start telling them, start promoting the fact that there's this eclipse coming and why don't you start school a day later? Because this is not an event to miss. Now, ours aren't the only books on eclipses. If you go onto Amazon, a whole flood of books are becoming available. 
um, as we speak on next year's Total Solar Club. So there's no shortage of information about this event coming up. In Louisville, the last total eclipse that passed through Louisville was in 1869. The next one is in 2153. So if you want to see the total eclipse, you've got to drive 125 miles south on I-64 and get into the path of totality. Or as we like to tell our granddaughters, we use this analogy. Would you rather look at a picture of an ice cream cone or eat an ice cream cone? <laughs> Well, that's the same argument as do you want to watch the eclipse on television or on the internet, or do you want to taste the eclipse by getting into the path? <laughs> a total eclipse is the most spectacular thing, the natural phenomenon I think that you will ever see with the naked eye, and it's something you will tell your children and grandchildren about. So please go next summer and get into the path of totality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fred. I normally tell our bullet lecturers that they have illuminated us, but I, <laughs> I can't say that now. I, I want to thank you for darkening us and allowing the shadows to pass over us. Uh, I think that there is no, uh, no better advocate than, than you, and we are honored to have you here as the, uh, as the world's fittest expert. And I want to thank not just you, but a few other people made this happen. The uh, Society of Physics Students, Mortar Board, and the Louisville Astronomical Society all put up posters. Are there any members of those groups here? Thank you, thank you, thank you. This place is run by volunteers and also for the, uh, for the members of the public and the students who came. And I'd like to open up the floor for questions. Fred. Yes? Would you recommend for the person who's going to see their code for the first time? Take a lot of gear or leave the gear at home and just experience it. <coughs> what I say and what I do are two different things. Right. <laughs> but I would, I, would, I would advocate that if it's your very first eclipse, don't bring a lot of gear. The best way to view the eclipse is with the naked eye. Get, buy a pair of these $2 or $3 eclipse glasses on, on the internet. Right. And maybe a pair of binoculars for totality. And between binoculars and naked eye, you will get the best view of the eclipse. And sit back and drink it in and enjoy it. If you really get hooked by it, then you're going to have to buy some plane tickets to join me in South America in 2019 or 2020, and then you can start doing, getting into photography. That's well, what I would like to do. Negotiation with the car yes. on August 20th. Yeah. All right. The, the planetarium is selling eclipse glasses, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just, just curious. If you're in outer space, do you see a flat spot going across the Earth? If you're in space, you, uh, the question was, if you're in space, do you see a black spot going across the Earth? The astronauts have photographed the moon's shadow moving across the Earth, and some unmanned satellites have done that, photographed the shadow moving across the Earth during the total eclipse. So yes, you do see that. Yes? When was the first predicted complete solar eclipse? Uh, that is, that's a difficult thing to pin down exactly. Um, back in, in, in um, 584 or 585 BC, um, um, the, the Greek historian Herodotus credited, uh, credited um, Eratosthenes uh, for, for observing, um, a, 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 for predicting that a total eclipse took place uh, during that year, and, in, and indeed it's recorded in history that there was this great battle in, in, uh, in what is now Iran uh, between the Medes and the Lydians, and in the middle of the battle, uh, this total eclipse took place, and supposedly they, laid, they saw this as a, as a cosmic sign, they laid down their weapons and they signed a peace treaty because of the eclipse. So eclipses have affected history. Now whether uh, uh, that eclipse was really predicted or not is questionable. He might have just been. You can use patterns from past eclipses and see a pattern and say there was a probability of an eclipse taking place out there. The eclipse prediction, in, in its more modern sense, really uh, 
started out uh, in full gear um, after Newton published his Principia. And 